Welcome to chapter 12. In the previous chapter, my medical incidents were narrated for 2016, 2017, and early 2018 when I was waiting in Liverpool for a court hearing. Chapter 12, which is a chronological continuation of chapter 11, finds me in Liverpool I moved to soon after 2018 started and remained for one to two months. In this chapter, I will first spend 10 to 15 minutes talking about my journey from the UK into Ireland. This is part one, and it contains no medical incidents. In part two of this chapter, we shall commence my narration of medical events in Ireland. Part two begins in July 2018, because that is when I had my first medical event in Ireland, over two months after entry. In early 2018, I waited for the further submissions court, which had only one branch in the country, and it was in Liverpool. I stayed at a cheap hostel, which was slightly crowded, but it was a nice change. There were people from the north of the UK, Americans, and all sorts of people. Of course, I was going to the hospital in Liverpool as well and I'm writing a little bit about that. As a cheap backpacker, it was the kind of place that has eight or ten bunk beds in a room, with top and bottom bunks. All kinds of people and tourists, male and female slept for varying amounts of time in those backpacker dormitory bedrooms. There was a man who stayed in that hostel off and on, who said he had knowledge of the UKBA, who called himself W. He would not give his last name. He heard my story sympathetically. He said that my problem with immigration proceedings, which consisted of my case being refused all the time, was because I never had a lawyer who liked me. He said I should move to Edinburgh, Belfast, or Dublin. In those places, there was a better chance of succeeding. The lawyers there would treat me better. I would even get accommodation for free if I started an asylum application in those places he said. He said he had given up his job because he did not enjoy deporting people and doing mass refusals of applications while pretending to read their reasons for wanting to stay. He wanted to be helpful to others, he said. Now this man was an African and I think he was a programmer which would probably pay more than working as a deportation officer with the UKBA. As I already explained, Muslims and black people were the kindest lawyers in the UK. They never acted against me, where others would. He told me that Dublin was the worst of the three places he recommended because it was outside the UK, which meant it would take a long time for that fresh application to be decided, as compared to doing the application in Edinburgh or Belfast. All this was playing on my mind subconsciously and I started to consider what this man had said seriously. I didn't believe the thing about the free accommodation. It was for people who were new to the country, unable to speak English, and had never been to school, or from Kurdistan or Somalia. Not for someone like me. Insupportable. I would be expected to sleep on the street like the local bums. Fend for myself. On top of it, I still did not have a legal right to work with a festering illness to add icing to the cake. Doctors were using this illness to play mind games with me. Since everything happens for a reason, I assume that the medical profession doesn't like me very much. I thought if I asked to make an application, starting afresh, they would simply arrest me at Belfast and Edinburgh. I felt Dublin was a safer Bet because that way I'd be able to get out of UKBA's deportation case and I could make sure I was 
not arrested by UKBA, by physically leaving UK territory. With that logic in mind, and feeling a little bit nervous, I asked Mr. W. Supposing I I want to do to Dublin how do I get there? I don't have papers. I don't have indefinite leave to remain in the United Kingdom. I don't have possession of my passport which is from India. How could I cross a national border without being arrested by UKBA? Mr. W. said I could go by bus or train from Belfast to Dublin. It would be perfectly safe. I wanted to know if the bus or train will stop at the national border and police would get on board to verify the passengers. He said he had never heard of such a thing happening and I should travel fearlessly into the Republic of Ireland. I knew nothing about the Republic of Ireland. What I wanted was to flee. Flee from a world of pain and punishment. No legal right to work. No legal right to have a relationship. Carrying with me notice is 96 which says I could be detained at any time for eight long years. It happened to other people as well. I'm not the only one. On April 30th, 2018, I carried minimal luggage, my possessions to take to the unknown land. Quite clumsily, I boarded a National Express bus in Liverpool at about 1 a.m. in the morning, standing and waiting. Alone, shivering under a dark, cold sky. When I arrived in Manchester, at 3 a.m. or so, the driver, who was to go to Belfast said my ticket from Manchester to Belfast had the wrong date. It was for the previous day. But he said never mind the mistake, you can board since my coach has very few passengers. The couch was supposed to take us all the way to Belfast and across a stretch of sea between Stranra and the port of Belfast. I needed to pay for the ferry ticket at Stranra. Because the ferry man would not accept my expired National Express ticket. Gratefully I agreed. It was the right time for me to travel. I knew I should board with thanks. As we headed northwards, the color of the sky changed. I knew this was a physical change that even my mediocre eyes could spot. Manchester, Liverpool, and Dublin, were at 52 degrees north. I suppose Preston is at 53 degrees north. The sky changed at Preston. As a tropical animal, I feel fascinated by the eerie northern sky. You see when I had flown to Canada, in 1995, the plane had flown over the desolate and eerie ravines of Greenland, but when I landed I was at 52 degrees north. Except for a day in Glasgow in 2004, I had never been north of 52 degrees. In Canada, I had never noticed a northern sky. Well, I was 52 degrees north in Canada throughout, and there was plenty of aurora borealis, in all its majesty, but not this type of northern sky. This northern sky is only in this area. European sky. This is my theory, using qualitative judgment, but feel it is not my imagination. There was a lot of security at Stranra before boarding the ferry. I was queued in a corridor where the wallpaper showed huge pictures of UKBA officers handcuffing people. Well, this did not happen to me on that occasion. It was like tic-tac. The UKBA does spot checks at Stranra, perhaps on random days. When you are crossing the sea on a ferry and entering another country on the other side, you are always checked by the immigration of two countries, one at the port of exit, the other at the port of entry, your destination. If that 
that day had been one of the days when UKBA was doing a spot check. I would have gotten caught. However, it was not illegal for me to travel from Stranra to Belfast because the terms of his 96 allowed tra travel inside the UK. What the UKBA would have have definitely done was prevent me from go going to Ireland, whether or not I disclosed my intention to go there. UKBA may have also detained me on the suspicion that I was somehow on the run because I was carrying a suitcase. You see when you were having your immigration case determined, and you have been put on, on is 96. That does give you a right to stay in the country. Liable to terms and conditions. They do detain everybody before sending them back to their country. There is also the kidnapping at the reporting center as I have explained. But if you are under the IS-96 of UKBA, you do not have to commit a crime to be arrested. They can simply arrest you on suspicion that you might be thinking to run away. Sometimes these suspicions can even be false or unfair. I arrived in Dublin Busaras by bus from Belfast Europa bus station at 4 or 5 in the evening of the same day. I looked nervously all around me to see if there were uniformed men but saw none. So I got a coffee and sat down for a short while with my cumbersome luggage. I had thought that there would be border patrol officers from the UK to Ireland and police would get into the vehicles. That's how they do it between America and Canada. Actually, I had looked up border crossing from the UK to Ireland on the internet a while before going to Liverpool, and forum users had commented. On entering Dundalk, Ireland, from the UK, then running for their lives after spotting Gardai. I think they were just scared, and hence thinking that way. I registered with the IPO in Dublin on the 17th of May 2018 and was taken to the Balsescan Reception Center. Six weeks later, I was moved to a remote location in County West Meath. Seven miles from a store or post office.